Hi everyone, um, so the last episode of The Undateables aired last night. I was quite sad to find out that it's actually the last episode because I've really enjoyed watching The Undateables and doing my review videos and everything. Um, so this is my last one until the next series. I hope there's a next series. Um, hopefully there will be. I think there will. Start with Justin. I'd like to say he seems like a really nice guy. Um, he was on series one. Um, yeah, and he's never had a girlfriend, which I was really surprised about. Um, th he went on a date um, in series one, um, but they said that they would just be friends and things, which was quite sad to hear that he's still, like, two years down the line, he's not had a, like, girlfriend yet. Um, yeah, so in this episode he decided to go speed dating. Um, I've always wanted to go speed dating and when I was single I totally thought about it. I was like it would be so great to do because you meet like so many people in such a short amount of time and um, you get to chat to people and like it seems like a really fun thing to do um, and he like got on really really well. He seemed like really confident um, and I remember he was speaking to that girl um, so, and he was like so what do you do for a living? And she was like, oh, I'm a hairdresser. When can you make my hair grow? It, it seemed so funny and so confident. And he got four phone numbers at the end. Um, I really hope that a date came out of them for numbers. Um, they didn't show on the show. Um, but I really hope that he found someone. And like, we're being really confident with speed dating, which was like, which is a really scary, nerve wracking thing, like meeting the new people in that, especially if you find difficulty with that. Um, but he seemed to take it all in his stride and really seemed to go for it. Um, so I really hope that he finds someone. Um, next is Shane, who's the poet. I have to say, Shane, I think he's so cute and he seemed like such a happy guy. Um, and yeah, he was talking about talking to girls and that he gets nervous and that. And I think it's really hard to make a first move, especially if you're a guy, because you don't really want to come across as like really pervy and that. Um, and for girls, I think it's like seem seeming desperate and that because the guys are always like we're always told that the guys are always the one that is supposed to make the first move and that. So it's like hard both ways. And he went out looking for guidance from people, which I thought was a really good thing to do. Like ask other guys, well, what do you do? Like how do you approach girls? It seemed like a really good thing to do. And yeah, he went to the creative writing wor workshop can't really speak today but workshop um, and yeah it seemed like a really good idea because he's really into his poetry and to find someone that's really into the poetry as well would be such a great idea and he came across really polite and really like a gentleman um, and he read the poem to this girl that he'd met there and it seemed to go down really well and his poems are absolutely amazing I don't know much about poetry but I think they're brilliant and he got her number in that, he was really happy about that and he went on a date with her and she was stopped and wrote the poem for him which I thought was so nice, it's so sweet and um, they went to the graveyard, I didn't really get the graveyard thing was it like the grave of a poet and that, I, d I didn't really get what it was um, like I remember when I watched it the first time I was like a graveyard, why is he taking her to a graveyard that's a bit weird on a first date but I think it was of a poet I could be totally wrong but it seemed to go down really really well and I hope they saw each other again because they seemed like such a cute match and they were looking in each other's eyes and that and I remember when he was waiting for her to come um, to the date when he was sitting in the chair I thought he looked really wise and like really like intelligent yeah that's the way he comes across a really nice guy next is Richard Richard I thought like yeah yeah, like the whole five mile radius thing and the nerves and the routine, I'm like really worried that that'll stop him in finding a date. And I don't know, yeah, it seems like, because like, my fiance doesn't even live five miles from me, like, I would think it would be so hard to find someone who does live that close to you. Like, very few people date their next door neighbour. Well, saying that, I think they probably would, like, especially if you live in a flat, because then you've got like more people. But anyway, I think it'll be really hard to find someone in the five mile radius. And he said he finds it hard to read people and it's like social dyslexia, which is such a good way to put it because it is like that. But I think reading people is so hard because so many people are like pretend to be polite. And it's like, oh, you think, oh, they're being really polite, but they're not. 
it's like so hard and some people laugh at a joke even if they don't know what it means and then you'll be like oh I think they're they think I'm really funny and that when they actually don't it's like so hard to read people um, especially with the whole online thing chatting to people you can't really read what they're actually thinking his mother Liz I think she like she's so helpful to him and she's trying to get him to go out with a five mile radius and trying to get him like more able like I think she's done really well like helping him to pick out his clothes and that and then the date that he got told about got cancelled and he was like oh that obviously means she doesn't want to see me and I'm like that would pop into my head like immediately if they hadn't said but she can meet next week or the day after and that and I thought it was such a shame but they did find another date for him um, and this time it was in London and I remember from the the time he was on the show last time he was like in London big bad F in London and I was like what's so bad about London like I love London um, there's nothing wrong with London like there's so many people so much things to do and everything so I think London's great um, yeah I, th I thought he swore a lot especially when he was anxious I noticed that but his mum like seemed to ignore it and just like try to keep him calm but that's one of the first things I noticed about him I was like quite like bad mannered and off putting to swear all the time well that's just what I think about it like some people swear all the time and class it as totally normal but like that's one of the first things I noticed about him he seemed much better on this date than the last dates that he'd been on um, it's much more calm and much more like relaxed and chatty about the whole thing um, and he seemed to get on with her much more than the last dates that he'd been on um, and they went and looked at the ducks and swans and I never knew that swans grunted uh, to me by surprise and the amount of times I've seen swans but I've never heard them make a noise and he was getting her to make the noise and go louder, do it louder and I was like oh that's so sweet and such a laugh and that um, seemed to get on much well but I hope that it goes well for him and I hope that he does be more relaxed going out of his five mile radius and things like that. Um, I've, I've got my fingers and toes crossed. Last but not least, Sam. I love Sam. I absolutely love Sam. He's so sweet and cute. Yeah, I love Sam. I remember them saying about the box of love and what ingredients you put in it and he said lipstick, brandy and vodka. Sounds nice. <laughs> um, I think he will find love. I really think he will because he's so sweet and yeah just because he's so sweet you'll find someone I really think he will um, his dad seems to give really good advice and support to Sam and um, they seem like two peas in a pod like his dad is so understanding um, and so great and he really wants Sam to find someone so he's really active in helping him find someone and giving him the advice and things um, he went back to the dating agency and they were like, who do you like? And he's like, Pippa Middleton, I like her curves on her bum. Can I just say I really love Pippa Middleton's bum as well. Great arse. Um, he went on a date and it was his first date in a year and that's nerve wracking in itself. If it's been a whole year since your last date, it's really scary. But they went to Madame Two Swords. I've always wanted to go there, it looks so cool, um, but the date went really well and they were looking at all the celebrities and he knew who all, the, all of them were, I didn't even know who half of them were to be honest. Um, so yeah, it seemed to go really well and I was quite gutted to find out that she'd had a change of heart and they just wanted to be friends, I was like, he will find someone, I, I'm positive that he'll find someone. He was saying his um, June wedding when they wanted to get married in Vegas. I'd love to get married in Vegas, I can get on board with that. I loved how they ended this series with Sam and his dad and the dog just walking home saying what do you want for tea? I love that end, it was such a great end. I really hope they do another series because The Undateables is such a good show and it's really good at showing that people with disabilities no matter what it is even if it's a learning disability Asperger's syndrome Down syndrome being in a wheelchair being blind whatever we're all looking for love and we're all looking for the same thing and we can get over our disabilities and even if it's social anxiety we can get over that no matter what we are all the same we're all looking for love in this world um, 
and we will find it just like the people that were on the series before um, they've found people have found someone um, we will find someone in this life and there's someone for everyone 